So the third and final type of DNA test is autosomal DNA. And this has a reach of about seven generations or approximately 210 years from your date of birth. So in my uh, autosomal test has a reach of about um, back to about 1765 to my four times great grandparents. But I've also tested my dad. And so I've been able to go back an extra generation. Um, and this test will hopefully have a fairly good chance of t detecting um, relatives who may be related on any of my lines back to about uh, to common ancestors uh, who were born about 1730. But I've also tested my aunt, so I also am able to go back on my maternal side to about uh, my five times great grandparents. Now, the here is a, an example of my matches page, and on the matches page, you have the names of your matches along the left hand column and then um, it has the suggested relationship in the middle. And you can see that on this particular page, I have uh, a couple of suggestions for third cousins, a couple of suggestions for fourth cousins. The next column looks at the amount of DNA we share together, the shared centimorgans of DNA. And in the final column is a list of surnames. And these are surnames that each of these individuals will have put in on their web page. Um, because the, the first thing that we will do is we will look through these these surnames in each match to see if there are common surnames that might indicate where we are actually matching. So for example with Dr. M, now just below the halfway mark down the page on the left, um, he has put a Simpson in his list of ancestral surnames and there is a Simpson in my family. So if we are connected to each other and if we do share a common ancestor then perhaps uh, we should be looking first at the Simpson uh, possibility. Um, similarly, just below him is a Mr. M, and he's a suggested uh, fourth cousin, and um, he has a Carol in his list of surnames, and I have an O. Carol in, in my ancestral list. So this would be the, the place where we might f first start to look for a potential uh, connection. So those are the matches, and um, you just need to get in touch with each of them uh, by clicking the email icon on the far left um, underneath their name and that puts you in touch with the individual and you say hi my name is so-and-so um, family tree DNA says that we are fourth cousins potentially I noticed that you have a Simpson in your list of ancestral surnames so do I maybe that's where we're connected uh, would you like to share information I'm quite happy to share information with you that's the sort of way that you would approach it and then you collaborate with that individual to see if you can ascertain where the connection is but in order to show you an example of how the autosomal DNA testing can be used to address specific questions, I need to tell you the, the mystery of the wedding memento. And um, several years ago, my dad was shuffling through his grandfather's papers and came across a bookmark. Um, so he picked it up and it was in fact a wedding memento and it said David Patterson and Ruby K. Gleason married at Thargominda on the 23rd of March 1893. So I was thinking, where is Thargominda? Is that somewhere in Ireland? I've never heard of it. So I did a Google search and Thargominda is in the middle of the Australian desert and uh, it's surrounded by nothing. Uh, it raised the question immediately, what the heck is a um, wedding memento from the middle of the Australian desert doing in my dad's grandfather's papers? So this was too tantalizing a question to let go unanswered and so I research, I found the marriage a certificate for Ruby Kathleen. I wrote off for it and they posted it to me from Australia and it had a lot of information and lo and behold it revealed that her parents were John Gleeson and Anne Gleeson and I thought fantastic because my great great grandparents were John Gleeson and Anne Gleeson. Were they the same people? I looked for other possible um, evidence of, of corroboration and um, Ruby Kathleen was born in Longstone. Great. Um, grandfather Martin was born in Longstone um, uh, well, Grandfather Martin and his siblings were either born in Longstone, Chalee, or Killiscully, uh, neighbouring townlands. So, again, it placed them in the right place. 
But she had her father's uh, profession as a hotel keeper on her marriage certificate and, and, and as a farmer on her death certificate, whereas our John Gleeson was definitely a labourer and he never managed any hotel in his life. So that didn't really gel. Um, but there were other things. Uh, Ruby Kathleen was born somewhere between 1872-1869, which tied in with the dates of birth of the uh, siblings of Grandfather Martin. And it's said that she went to Australia in 1886, which ties in with the death of our John Gleeson in 1885, leaving the family destitute. So there were various things that tied the two families together, including family lore on our side, that um, Grandfather Martin's siblings Timothy and Winifred had gone off to Australia, and uh, Winifred, in fact, had had a daughter who was a famous concert pianist or a singer or something like that. Um, now, I was able to trace the living descendants of Ruby Kathleen, and um, I spoke with her grandson, or communicated with her grandson via email. His name isn't Alan, I've privatised it for uh, privacy purposes. And um, I learned from Alan and his family that Ruby Kathleen had an uncle and aunt in Sydney. Uh, she had a brother who went off to the US and became a famous baseball player. And she had a daughter who was an excellent musician, particularly at the violin. And this had um, um, parallels with the family lore that we had on our side. So I uh, convinced Alan to take the test. And um, what we were expecting is that if Grandfather Martin and Ruby Kathleen were siblings, then they should share on average 50%, but certainly within the range of 40 to 57. Uh, that would make uh, their offspring, uh, Jack and Ivy Myrtle May, first cousins, who would have shared 12.5%, and then Dad and Alan, uh, second cousins, and they would have shared 3.1%. To five percent. Uh, so with every generation, the amount of DNA that's shared between the two people is um, only a quarter of what it was um, at the previous generational level. So 12.5% is a quarter of 50, and 3.125% is a quarter of 12.5. So Alan took the test, and the results came back, and they showed that Dad and Alan shared 2.4% of their DNA in common. And this is well within the percentage range that you would expect for second cousins. Now, I had taken the test as well, and my results showed that me and Alan shared, um, or that I and Alan shared 1.4% of our DNA in common, again, well within the range that one would expect for second cousins once removed. So, in short, what the DNA has told us is that we are definitely genetically related and the best fit is that Dad and Alan are second cousins. Um, but there is still need for corroborative documentary evidence and there are many unanswered questions. So for example, we never had a Ruby Kathleen in our family. So what, if she is a sister of Martin, then she was either Catherine, Bridget or Winifred. Why did she change her name? Um, how the hell did she get to the middle of the Australian desert? And um, whatever happened, who were her uncle and aunt, and aunt in Sydney? And whatever happened to her brother, who was a baseball player in America? So these tantalizing questions still remain, but at least the DNA test has told us the theory is correct. You're on the right track. Keep going, looking for documentary evidence. And that's the story of the wedding memento from us. So to summarise, why DNA testing detects relatives on the paternal line, the direct male line? Um, because why DNA and surnames pass down from father to sons? And the examples we looked at were Thomas Jefferson and the Spear and Surname Project. If you get a chance, look at Nile of the Nine Hostages uh, the, and the paper that was produced by Dan Bradley's group at Trinity College Dublin because it gives a fascinating insight into um, Irish Y DNA and the, the, the effect that it has had on the genetic signature of the population at large. We also looked at mitochondrial DNA testing um, and the fact that it detects relatives on the maternal line, the direct female line, and the example we gave here was Anastasia.
Uh, we looked at autosomal testing and we saw that it detects relatives on all of the lines. So whereas direct male line and direct female line are only one line on either side of your ancestral pyramid, um, the autosomal testing looks at all of the lines in the middle. Uh, so that will be up to 64 uh, great, 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 great grandparents um, at that uh, seven generational level. Um, deep ancestry and human migration can be studied by using both Y-DNA and mitochondrial DNA. If you're thinking of doing a fishing trip, the best thing to do is an autosomal test. That will give you the most matches, the most results. Next best would be the Y-DNA testing, because the surname follows the Y chromosome from uh, generation to generation. And the, the least useful would be the mitochondrial DNA test. But for specific questions and specific projects, all three tests are useful. It very much depends on the specific question involved. And for surname projects, then certainly one name and certainly one name studies, then the Y DNA is is a must. There are limited testing. Um, DNA testing is not a substitute for documentary research. It's just an extra tool for your kit. Uh, cost is an issue. It costs about one hundred and fifty dollars, one hundred and fifty euros for both Y DNA and mitochondrial DNA testing, and autosomal testing costs about three hundred dollars, depending on which company you go with. Um, Understanding the results is is difficult for many, many people. Uh, a lot of people find it far too technical, and that's one of the most common complaints that people have when they get their Y-DNA or mitochondrial DNA or autosomal DNA results. Um, people will always have concerns about privacy and data protection, and there are legal implications for in some situations, possibly. Uh, you also have to brace yourself for the possibility of non-paternity events, such as adoptions or illegitimacies that you may not have been aware of in your particular ancestral line. And as far as the matches are concerned, where do they come from? Well, DNA testing is mainly taken off in the US, uh, so most of the matches will be from America. Now, this is quite useful for um, Irish emigrants, uh, because uh, a lot of people emigrated to America from Ireland um, up to the, the famine and thereafter. So all throughout the 1800s, there was a huge exodus. And it, uh, from the point of view of testing, uh, if you're Irish, then it's likely that you will actually pick up quite a few um, distant relatives in America. The final question is, well, which company to test with? And the di big difficulty is here that don't all talk to each other in the sense that um, if you test with company A, you're only compared with the database in company A. You're not compared with the database in company B or the database in company C. So um, it would, in the ideal world, you could test with one company and be compared across all of the companies, but that currently is not the situation. There are some public databases available where you can uh, upload your own data um, but uh, and, and compare it across different companies, but they're not used as much as they could be. So the big question is, do you go for the company with the biggest database? Do you go for the company with the best projects, the best customer support, the widest range of products? These are the sort of questions that you need to ask yourself as you uh, do your exploration and um, check out the various companies and the, the tests that they offer. That concludes the presentation, and hopefully it's given you some idea of the type of uh, DNA tests that are available and how they can be applied in practice to help you break down your uh, brick, the brick walls in your family trees. And I leave you with a list of links and resources, which can also be found in the links page on the, um, on the website. Uh, thanks very much.